so like I told you, this is a 2020 model. Have not worked on one of those yet, but it's the same rough setup. You know, you got your strut up here. Uh, this is where you take the bolts out for it, but we'll get to that later. Sway bar link on the back side now. This is towards the cap. So now these are running the sway bar behind the front cross member and differential. So you need to get underneath here and remove that bolt right there, which is gonna allow this to have some sway room on this lower control arm. And then lower strut mount hardware. So you're gonna remove this upper control arm nut here. And that will allow us to drop this uh, hub assembly and everything down to where we can, we'll have to undo these. Then, like I said, here's your strut. Right down here on the bottom, there's two bolts on each side and that dog bone there. Take those out and then you'll undo your upper control arm here. And what that's gonna do is it'll allow us to take this whole hub assembly down and then we can work on getting the strut out. So let's get to that point. Okay guys. Driver side and all that's in. I'm gonna run through it all on the passenger side with you because this one has some issues that I was not aware I was gonna have. Now that I've gone through it all, I'll be able to walk you guys through it easier. So I'm gonna move on to the other side. Okay, so passenger side, I'll run you back through it. Um, sway bar here. I went on the bottom on the other side and that was a pain in the neck. So I'm gonna go ahead and let me scoot you around here. Just do it right here on the top sway bar link mount. Take that off and that'll be a lot easier than getting up inside that control arm because that's a pain in the butt. Um, it also specifies to take your brake caliper off. But what I did on the other side, and the reason for that is because they don't want you to stretch all these lines and break them. But this particular one, right? Sorry, man, I'm horrible at camera. We think I'd know how to do this by now. This one right here, I didn't want to take that out. Um, that's all part of your ABS and everything. I didn't want to take that out because I didn't want to damage the sensor. So what I did was I just unbolted all these brackets here. There's one here, there's one right here, there's one back here, and then this one up here on your control arm. And then once I got the uh, upper control arm undone, I just lowered this down and laid it over and that didn't stretch these out. So I didn't have to take the caliper off um, if I would have taken it off, that's still hooked to your control arm. So it still would have moved it around. It could have stretched it from up there. So I went ahead and just uh, und undid those brackets. It's a 10 millimeter. It was a lot easier that way. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and just start on this one. Do the same way. We'll undo that sway bar link. We'll undo our tie rod in here. Um, then our lower strut mounts, which is, ooh, you can see this a lot better on this side. It's these here on the bottom of your strut and do both of those. And then I'll show you this part here because there's a way to do this safely where you don't hurt yourself. But anyway, that's your upper control arm out. And then we'll undo these up here. You can see it's got like wiring harness crap. You just push that up out of your way. And those are 18 millimeter. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just get started on it and I'll kind of run you guys through it when I have little things to uh, show you. Okay, so sway bar link. I know you can't see it from there, but I showed you a minute ago. I went ahead and just pulled that nut out. So now what we need to do is get our tie rod end here. Yes, 21 millimeter. That breaks off pretty easy. We're gonna be in for some damage for sure. If you think I tear stuff up now, just wait. Okay, now there's also tie rod tools you can get, like the pitchforks. Um, I never use those, because I always tear up the boot and there's just a lot of beating and banging you don't need. All I do is get an attitude adjuster, hit right here on the spindle. Be careful not to hit your rotor, your dust shield or anything. Hit right here on the spindle, just give it some love taps, it'll come right off. There it is. You'll see it kind of break loose. And now we've got our tie rod end off. Next, we need to uh, go ahead, and here's what I was saying earlier about where some danger can be. Uh, you'll see in all my videos, no matter what kind of suspension I'm doing, if it's got the load on it still, this is how I keep it off. All I'm gonna do, easy, safe way to do it, 
you've already got your vehicle on the jack stands, when you get to this point that you're gonna break your uh, strut or anything on the suspension that's actually holding the load, whether that be a coil spring or whatnot, or your strut here, go ahead and get underneath your lower control arm and just raise it up, get that tension off to where you know all the tension's on your jack here. That way, when we undo our strut here, and we undo our upper control arm, when we go to lower that, that strut doesn't just launch it out of there because that'll, that'll jack you up in a heartbeat. Okay, so now that we have the load under control, the bottom strut mounts are a 15 millimeter, 10 millimeter wrench, and I'm gonna take off these brackets for the uh, all the lines and junk that go to the um, brake assembly. Get those out of the way. That way when the, like I said, when the, when we drop that lower control arm, the spindle comes with it. Now we know our brake lines are okay when we go down. So here, now we're gonna do our upper, upper control arm. That's gonna be also an 18 millimeter. Run your nut down so you're, you know you still got some thread hanging there. Because this also has some tension on it. Which right now, your strut still pushing on that lower control arm. We got tension with the uh, jack underneath it. Take one of your pitchforks or just hit it. Same way we did on the uh, tie rod in here. Just hit it on the spindle, knock that loose. Leave your nut on there, that way if it pops, it doesn't shoot off. There it went, see it pop up? Now, that's plenty. The truck's starting to raise up a little, so you know. You can work it like that with your hand. You know you're safe. You got enough tension where it needs to be. So you can go ahead and take that thing off. Just be really careful and always keep checking to make sure nothing's slipped out of the way or gonna cause something to slip, shoot off, and bust you. Cause this is, this is fun stuff and it's really cool when it's done, but this is dangerous as hell. If you ain't careful, you can get hurt bad. control arm out of the way. Now we're going to go ahead, get our jack and just lower this down. There we go. Now the top nuts on the strut are still all completely torqued in. So that allowed us to go ahead and let that tension off. And you saw it kind of break away a minute. It pushed away from that control arm, but it didn't come out because we had that top still in. So always do that last. So always do these up here last. That way you know there ain't no tension on it now. You're safe, all right? So the top is also, I think those are 18. Hang on, let me try again, it might be 15. Nope, 18. 18 millimeter on the top three nuts of the strut. So I'm gonna push that wiring crap out of the way and go ahead and get it out of there. Okay, when you get your three nuts out of the top, Go ahead and just pull your strut out of there. Now we'll take it over to the work table, show you what we're gonna do up here with the spacer. Okay guys, now to get onto the front, we've got our strut device here. Now if you don't have a device, it's fine. This just makes it easier for me to show you. So this is what you call a stackable lift. Uh, it's got the triangular shape, you've got two pieces to it. Um, normally, uh, if this is your first time to the channel, you can go back and look. We've done four other videos for Torch Off Road, and I did some spacer kits, and they were just the round circular spacers that kind of looked like uh, wheel spacers. And you have to, when you put those on, sometimes you got to rotate your strut and mess with the dog bone. So if you're dealing with one of those, go ahead and go back on my channel and look, look for that video there. Uh, we've got a couple of those in. But this one is stackable. So what that means is where you're stud, your um, OEM original stud comes out, your new stud's gonna be in the same place, whereas before it'd be kind of cockeyed, it would, it would rotate a little bit. So this one's gonna, there's only one way it fits too, y'all. There it is. Okay, so this one's gonna go right in the same spot. So you don't have to worry about tweaking anything on the bottom of the strut. But what you do have to do is you put your plate in here, 
go ahead and put that one on. And then we're gonna go in and just set this, set this spacer on. And the reason why we're gonna do that with it out being on the hole is because we're gonna have to trim this stud a little bit on your uh, on the original part of the of the strut. That way, when you go to put it on, your new strut's not sitting up in the air and it'll never ride right. Something will end up breaking. So you can see right there the gap we have. Hold on. Let me help you get in here a little bit better, y'all. Right now there's a gap right here. Kind of pull it up a little. There's a gap. That's because your uh, original studs are hitting right on our new or on our new spacer here. So what the best thing to do is go ahead and pull that out of the holes and just set it down next to it. Now you need to look at where the bottom of this stud is here, where it presses in, and make you a mark on your stud and cut that off. Get you a, a sawzall blade, a grinding wheel, however you prefer to do it, that's up to you. I'm gonna use a cutting wheel. Um, you can mark it, tape it, paint it, whatever you wanna do, but what I did earlier, stock bolts, I just went to right here. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. Sorry if it's shaky. It is I went right here. You can see where there's that little bullet looking, uh, bullet head looking piece right here. I just cut like a thread barely below it and that made it perfect. Um, I'll put the spacer on and show you kind of comparison. All right, now lay this one up there. See, now you can see where we're hitting and we have a space again. Take that out, set her down. Look across here where you want to cut it. So I'm just going to go just below where that, where it's dirty from being in that red mud. Just cut it right there, just underneath that bullet. So you make your own mark and do it how you want. Something I forgot to mention before I start cutting. Keep your, uh, put your stock nuts that you pull off when you pull the strut out on before you cut the bolts. That way, when you cut it off, it'll help you clean some of those threads off that you just cut, and it almost traces it for you. It cleans it off. That way, when you put your new bolts on, it'll go down a lot easier. Uh, sometimes, if you can feel some burrs up high, just work it off and on a few times with the impact or whatever you want to do. Ratchet, just wrench. Totally up to you. It's your ride. Pick your poison. If you don't have a vice, don't let that slow you down. This is only the second one I've done where I've had a vice. I'm really glad to have it, but I've done it all on the ground and everything. So, I mean, I was, I had my knees on one and the saws all one time. And, I mean, whatever, whatever works for you, you can get it done. Back on with our small spacer here, spacer plate, whatever they want to call it. Not entirely sure. I probably should be. Let's see, I'm gonna fit one away. Well, what in the world have I got going on here? There we go. Okay, now take your big part of the spacer, do the same thing, set it on there, and then go ahead and put your supplied washers and nuts on. These, of course, go on top because they're already on there when it comes in the package. And then on the uh, spacer mount, you got these washers and nylocks. Let's get that and tighten it down. You'll be ready to go. So I'm gonna get this all snug and meet you back over at the truck. Now we've got our spacer on. Let's take these new nuts off. Leave them on there until you get over here. That way you don't lose them, which I almost did already. Okay, now you're just gonna put it right back in. Same way it came out. On this particular one, I'm still running the OEM struts. So sticker was faced out. You know your dog bones pivoted forward to go on the Hey, on there, just put it right back the way it was. There we go, nailed it. Well, I thought I did. Spoke too soon, brothers. Got a little cocky. There we go, nailed it. Control arm, make sure you're in a spot where still get your, your strut bolts. Okay, note, I uh, kind of got ahead of myself. Don't completely tighten up your top strut nuts until you get your dog bone on the bottom of your strut mount put in. 
I had to use a ratchet strap and stuff to get that pulled where I needed to go. Otherwise, it's gonna have to undo everything up top. So just keep that in mind. Um, leave it loose up top, but on, and get your bottom bolts ran in, and then snug everything up. So now that we got that, I'm gonna get this ratchet strap off and out of the way. And then we'll go ahead and raise up this lower control arm and uh, button everything back up. Get her off a little bit. Get your sway bar put in there first. And up this lower control arm and it starts coming off your jack stand. So ease up on it then, that way you're not just sitting on your control arm because if it were to slip and you're underneath or something, it's gonna end up hurting. You gotta work on the old upper control arm. Oh shit. Uh, get you a bar. Try down on her like so. Get your nut ready. Put it on there as far as you can get it. And let off. You're good. Now, you'll have that tension from the spring on here to keep this ball joint from spinning. And go ahead and get her on. And just run that sucker up. It starts to spin, just kind of take some load off your lower control arm. That way it holds tension here. But you'll see it raising up as you're tightening it. Get your tie rod back in. Okay, you can put a wrench on the bottom of that nut, that tie rod in, excuse me, and then run your nut in, hold it in place. All right, that good and snug. Now you got everything back together, go ahead and get your brake lines put back on, and then we'll get the wheel back on it with these newer vehicles like this one. You might want to mark or just do one at a time on your wheels, not take them all off and stack them off the side because with the tire pressure monitor system, the TPMS, these things, uh, you don't want to have your right front over on the left rear or whatever because it's going to show wrong on your internal stuff. So make sure you put the correct wheel back on the correct hub. Now just go ahead and raise it up. Everything clear out from underneath. Go up or down. There we go. Yep, a little bit of a difference there. Good deal. Okay, let's move on to the rear.